my treasure, truly, her name is Treasure Fennel. We met two years ago as she inquired of Desert Stream Ministry. I want to, I have victory. I want to do a ministry, you know, enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, and uh, we said, well, do you, do you want to suffer too? Would that be good? <laughs> is suffering part of the victory package? And, <laughs> and uh, so that was two years ago. And it has been such uh, a joyful, meaningful journey with treasure uh, as, as an intern and now as a graduate and a woman with um, an amazing uh, mission through the story of her life. So here is Treasure Fennel. I grew up in an environment where sexual and relational brokenness were the examples of normality in my world. As a child growing up, I was taught to keep uh, secrets the main rule was, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And what that meant was that I could never tell anyone that the white noise of the night, for me, was hearing the crying and screams of my mom and the other women that I knew in the neighborhood being physically and sexually abused. That was the sounds that would that I went to sleep with at night. I couldn't tell anyone, sorry. I couldn't tell anyone that the male family members and friends of the family who were supposed to be protecting me were instead robbing me of my innocence and youth by molesting me and making me service their sexual perversions for years. And I couldn't tell anyone when my dad's best friend raped me at the age of 12. These were my examples of what it was to be a girl and someday a woman. Because of these examples and experiences and assaults on my identity as a little girl, I decided in my heart that I was somehow just not be a girl nor a woman. Instead, I would try to be a boy because they could do whatever they wanted to do. And girls were weak and only to be abused. I learned that I wasn't allowed to be afraid and that I actually wasn't allowed to feel anything at all. I had to learn to fight for my life and to protect myself and the other women in my family, while at the same time constantly being reminded by men who took advantage that I was still a weak woman or girl. By the time I got into junior high, I found myself attracted to other girls, and I never acted on those things. And at the same time, I was well on my way to becoming an, another African-American st statistic by becoming pregnant at a young age as a teenager and then finding myself married to a man that I barely knew. Married and with two children at the age of 19, I had my first intimate encounter with a woman who'd confessed to me that she was gay. It was way too easy for me to fully embrace the lesbian lifestyle. And it was a fitting lifestyle for me, or I thought. I was physically and emotionally attracted to women and had almost a murderous hatred for men. Over time, I came to use my chosen lifestyle as a way of getting back at men by openly rejecting them and denying them me as a woman. I didn't realize that I was not hurting them, but that I was the one hurting. And that I was also hurting the women that I would be involved with. 
I lived the lesbian lifestyle for 10 years. And to me, I was living a chosen lifestyle. I made the choice. I entered into it with my eyes wide open. I, did, I wasn't blindly led into it. I knew what I was doing. My DNA didn't make me do it, nor did I blame my past. I was a woman who liked women, and I didn't try to deny that with a made-up reason for it. I was the one that had accepted the lies of the lifestyle and said yes to the recycling of brokenness by going from one person to another, trying to find the love that only God through Christ can provide. And even in that, even in the midst of hopelessness for life, of such relationships, anything was better than being alone. After a few years, I became another mad at the world gay chick who could feel absolutely nothing. I was empty inside, which is exactly what hopelessness does to us. My introduction to God's view of homosexuality was Romans 1, verses 24 through 29, and we all know it. I didn't know much about God or the Bible, but as I read those words, I understood two things immediately. One was that this word was true somehow and that I was in really deep, deep trouble. <laughs> and again, I couldn't tell anyone about it because the girl that had shown me this truth was a gay pastor's daughter and she was living the same lifestyle, so she was not able to help me. God in his mercy, though, didn't leave me stranded in hopelessness. A few months later, he led me to the first Christian woman I'd ever, ever known at that time in my life. And she became my friend. She had no ulterior motives. She didn't want anything from me. She didn't Bible beat me. She didn't pressure me. She was just simply my friend. I valued her friendship so much that I wanted her to know the truth about my lifestyle. So with tears streaming down my face, with the expectation of her rejection of me, I told her the truth. And the response I got from this little, short, white firecracker of a Christian woman from the country was, girl, I already knew that about you. <laughs> God told me that when I first met you. She then told me that God wanted me to know that he loves and forgives me and that through Christ, he wanted, me to, he wanted to have a personal relationship with me even after all I'd done. I didn't understand this God I didn't understand this love and forgiveness that she spoke of. What kind of love was this? She then asked me if I wanted to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I looked her square in the eye and said no. <laughs> but there was a spark of hope in my heart that day. And she didn't stop being my friend. Today, as a result of her example and message from the Lord, I believe a personal message from him, I have been saved for over 16 years and free from homosexuality for 13 years. By God's transforming power, I've been free from all desires, unforgiveness, and shame associated with it. And my freedom is not, nor has it ever been, temporary. Now, it was not easy. There was an intense three-year process, spiritually and naturally, fighting for my life and freedom to have that kind of freedom. Now, I do not desire a woman women, and I do not hate men, and I fully embrace my femininity. I am all of that. 
<laughs> now, in the last year, God has continued transforming my life with his healing power, which was new to me, as he led me to Desert Stream Ministries. On May 29th, I completed a year-long internship with Andrew Comiskey and the beautiful, beautiful staff of Desert Stream Ministries. Now, I must admit that after a full year of feeling and often being the only African-American proverbial elephant in the room, <laughs> and as you can look around and see, it's still that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, it was the most intense, complicated, life-defining, challenging, best thing that has ever happened to me since my salvation and freedom from homosexuality. And I really, Andrew and Dean, all of you guys, I do not have the words to express the deep, deep love I have for you. In the past year, God, through, his, through this body of Christ offering, has helped me enter into a new journey of healing from pain of the past, fear of men, and the issues of life that kept me from really trusting God to protect me. I am able to feel for the very first time in my life since I was a little girl. And I'm not afraid of that. I'm able to give language and truth to my own brokenness and experience God as the healer of broken hearts. And the best thing of all is that I didn't even know I needed it. It is a gift from God. And so is RHN, Restored Hope Network. It's a gift from God. And I am so thankful. And as I close, I want to say that I'm not thrown off because I represent a culture in this environment that is almost absent here. Because I'm not part of a black church, white church, rich church, poor church, nor an ex-labeled this, that, or the other church in the body of Christ. Like many of you here, I am a Christian. I am a child of God. And everything, absolutely everything else is secondary or below that. As a matter of fact, it is my prayer, and I know it is the prayer and heart's cry of many within RHN, is that God will use me and us and the transformation that we all represent to tear down the walls of separation so that we can begin to express the true flavors of God's diversity within the body of Christ so that his love can be fully expressed to those that are outside of the body of Christ. God bless you all. <laughs>